Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Section 126 of Section 1 of the Constitution provides that at each first sitting after a general election and before proceeding to any other business, the National Assembly must elect a presiding officer to be known as the Speaker. And whereas Section 126, subsection 5 of the Constitution provides that before commencing his or her duties, the Speaker must take before the Chief Justice or the next most senior judge available the oath of loyalty and office in the forms set out in the third chapter. <coughs> and whereas you, Jacob Francis Zita Milimo Mutenda, having good, been duly elected speaker of the National Assembly, in terms of section 126, subsection 1 of the Constitution, now, therefore, I look, Madaba, Chief Justice of the Republic of Zimbabwe, by virtue of the power vested in me, in terms of section 126, of section 5 of the Constitution, do call upon you, Jacob Francis Zinda Mimo Mutenda, to take the oath of reality and office. I, Jacob Francis Vida Mimo Mutenda, swear that I will. observe the laws of Zimbabwe, so it helps me God.
Section 4 of the Constitution provides that before commencing his or her duties, the Deputy Speaker must take before the Chief Justice or the next most senior judge available the oath of royalty and office in the form set out in the third ship. And whereas you, Titi Gezi, having been duly elected as Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly in terms of Section 127, Subsection 1 of the Constitution. Now, therefore, I, Luke Malab, Chief Justice of the Republic of Zimbabwe, by virtue of the powers vested in me in terms of Section 127, Subsection 4 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe do call upon you, Titi Gezi, to take the oath of reality and office. <laughs>
May I have the privilege to address the August House of the distinguished honorable members. I first of all congratulating all the members of Parliament here present in the National Assembly for the manner in which you conducted yourselves yesterday as I followed the proceedings very intently. It was a pleasure to see a lot of new faces, more so young persons for that matter. Congratulations. Your election enabled today's process to take place. And I'm grateful that I have been sorry as the Speaker of the National Assembly and also as the Speaker of Parliament. In the context to that, I should have the privilege and the honor of being head of the this revered institution. Honorable members, I take the oath as a very, very significant happening in one's life. The oath is an affirmation, an affirmation that we are accepting the responsibility to act in our various stations, constituencies, as members of parliament and residing officers. When you read very carefully the author, right at the beginning, it does indicate that we have to express our loyalty to Zimbabwe. Our loyalty to Zimbabwe is not to the coordinates of the geography of Zimbabwe. It is a loyalty to the sovereign state of Zimbabwe, which is permanent, which is permanent and will not change even when we are born in the future. It is therefore important that as we affirm that loyalty, to our motherland. We must be conscious each day of our lives as we perform our duties as members of parliament and as presiding officers that we are indebted to our motherland. Our motherland from which dust we came from and from which dust we shall return. Because the final blanket that will be above us will be the soil of our motherland. In that respect, in that respect, therein lies our desire to remain Lawyer, under one flag, one national anthem. We committed ourselves in our oath 
to uphold the Constitution. Let us work together in that responsibility. Honorable members, we cannot uphold that which we do not understand or know. It is therefore my plea that the Constitution be read thoroughly by all of us so that we are able to uphold it as something that is fully understood by us. Not only that, we have the responsibility in terms of Article 7 of the Constitution to disseminate that Constitution, which has been translated into all the 14 indigenous languages. It is therefore peremptory that we should be seen to be the apostles in the dissemination of that constitution. Side by side, our oath demands that we must uphold all the laws of the government. And in doing so, we are going to be continually guided by the Supreme Law so that there is no deviation in that direction. And finally, our oath says we should perform our duties to the best of our abilities. Now, biblically, let us imitate the first two stewards. One was given five talents, the other two, the other one. The first two multiplied their talents in the performance of our responsibilities as members of parliament. Let us be alive that we are going to be called upon to exercise those abilities at all times. And it's not a walk in the garden as the older members of parliament will indicate and affirm that we'll be called upon to do certain things beyond the constitutional mandate for which you have been elected, going to the funerals, attending to schools, the problems of school children without fees, without uniforms. You'll be expected to go to weddings. The electorate will expect you. And this is a very costly exercise. It's not easy. I pray therefore that as you apply to the best of your abilities, the best of your abilities, your energies, have hope that the people will understand you, that you are not miracle workers. I therefore conclude by saying, let us commit ourselves through a unity of purpose. A unity of purpose, particularly as we exercise the tripartite roles, constitutional roles given us by the Constitution of legislation, of legislation. Sometimes we underestimate ourselves as legislators. No country in this world, no country in this world can stand without the authority of the law. And that law comes from members of parliament. This is how critical we are in this process of the legislative process. And furthermore, we are required, of course, to represent our people effectively. Let us not experience in the 10th parliament a situation where some members will 
will start as we have started now. <laughs> the parliamentary process and not even open their mouths. <laughs> to say something from the constitution the constituency which they represent. That would be a serious indictment against us. If you cannot debate, say, a motion, all right, you can ask for a question. You may not ask for a question, you can also uh, ask written questions so that you truly represent the people in all respects. Let us not have dumb members of parliament. Let us have members of parliament who will speak for the voiceless electorate because you are the ones representing the electorate here. They cannot be in this institution, but they are there through your presence here. And finally, and yes, of course, oversight, critical oversight on the executive is very important. This comes to the commit system. And the commit system is the heartbeat of parliamentary processes. One expects that every member who is assigned to a particular committee, that member will be able to contribute as much as possible in the committee system, representing the people or exercising oversight on the executive or indeed carrying out the legislative process through public interface. I conclude by saying I wish all of us, I wish all of us, all the prosperity in the ten and we can only achieve that prosperity and make a difference in our parliamentary processes if we remain committed and continue to share a unity of purpose. That will be an indelible mark in our next five years as we conclude that in 2018. Honourable members, I have to inform the House that in terms of standing order number 11, I am sorry you will forgive me. In my conclusion, I should have apologized for the late start of the proceedings. We've been waiting for a long time. There are certain exigencies. So my apologies for that. I hope it will not happen in the 11th Parliament. I have to present myself and the honor, the honorable Titi Yezi, uh, to His Excellency the President, and shall inform him that the choice of this house has fallen upon me to be your speaker <coughs> and upon Honorable Sisi Gezi to be the speaker as well as chairperson of committee. In presenting myself to the president, I shall in your name and approval lay claim to the undoubted rights and privileges of parliament by law and customs established which are to be enjoyed by the Parliament of Zimbabwe, pursuant to the requirements of the Constitution and the law. I now invite my proposer and seconder to accompany me together with as many honorable members as, as may desire to do so the ceremony that will take place at the State House and a date to be announced later. Accordingly, I declare this session 
uh, adjourned until it, the parliament is officially opened by His Excellency the President on a date to be pronounced to some percent. I thank you. Lunch for honorable members will be served in a multi purpose wall immediately after this event. Ushers will direct the honorable members to the multi purpose wall in the event.